And good day once again, and uh, welcome back into the International Space Station Flight Control Room here at the Johnson Space Center in Houston. We've extended our Space Station Live broadcast for the day a few minutes. A busy man has joined us today. He is the lead flight director for Expedition 38, Judd Freeling. Judd, thanks for being with us today. You just literally walked out of the International Space Station Mission Management Team meeting. How did all of that discussion go, and uh, how are we looking for uh, the start of the spacewalk on Tuesday morning? Yes, the discussion went great. Uh, we're looking, uh, we give a go for the uh, the next uh, EVA, that's tomorrow morning. Uh, so that's, uh, we're all ready to go. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at uh, the last 48 hours here. The first spacewalk, uh, the crew worked extremely efficiently, uh, basically uh, knocked off uh, the first two hours of what had been planned for the second spacewalk. And um, they're back in the airlock and um, Take us, walk us through uh, what happened back in the Quest airlock at the end of Saturday's spacewalk and uh, the resulting activities over the past couple of days. Yeah, so uh, we, uh, we, we intend for at the end of the EVA to, to kind of clean up the EVA. And uh, uh, at the end of that, uh, we, uh, we pressurized the, uh, the airlock. And uh, once we did that, uh, we had an inadvertent switch throw that uh, turned some water on uh, to go to uh, one of the suits. And uh, that uh, inadvertent switch throw um, made us question whether or not we got some water in uh, the sublimator module of one of those suits uh, while it was uh, at, uh, at pressure. Uh, so the reason that's uh, not such a good thing is that uh, we expect water to go in the sublimator uh, when, when we're at vacuum of the, uh, the airlock, uh, and that, that the act of the water going in the sublimator actually is what creates a, an ice brick on the sublimator and allows us to uh, reject heat on the suits once they go out uh, EVA. Uh, when, when water gets in that sublimator at, uh, at pressure, uh, there's, a, there's a chance that uh, the, uh, once we go back to vacuum again, that that water will freeze in kind of an incorrect place in the sublimator and kind of let it expand uh, out uh, and, and bow the, the sublimator. So, um, so because there's a, there was a question about whether we had uh, uh, liquid water in uh, that sublimator, that suit uh, 3010, which was Rick's suit, uh, we, uh, we had to call that suit no-go. Okay, now in calling it no-go, that uh uh, necessitated a, a discussion about uh, how much time it would take uh, to get another suit ready to go, and that's uh, what led us from a Monday spacewalk today to, to a Tuesday spacewalk. So what has the crew been doing now uh, to prepare for that, and what did they do back, uh, I guess, yesterday on Sunday in order to uh, get the ball rolling? Right, so uh, <clears throat> we had already planned for them uh, on Sunday to, to have a, a jam-packed day of, uh, of activities, uh, scrubbing their suits, uh, uh, scrubbing the water within their suits and, and, and various other uh, cleanup t activities to get them ready for a, an EVA that would have been on Monday. Uh, so because uh, we had to call this suit, uh, the 3010 Rick, Rick suit, uh, no-go, uh, that means we, we kind of have to do a, a suit shuffle. And we, we, we shuffle, shuffle the suits around such that uh, we can get uh, uh, our backup suit, which is a 3005, resized. Uh, we also have to... Uh, the, w the way it works out is that uh, 3005 uh, has a, an upper tor torso unit on it uh, that would only fit uh, Mike. And so we have to give that one to Mike, and uh, we have to take the, the one that Mike was using uh, in this, this previous EVA and give that to Rick. So, so we basically have to, to resize both of those suits. Sort of a tailoring nightmare if you went into a department store to, exactly. to get the right fit. Right. Uh, now, the suit uh, that Rick wore on Saturday that's been in the process of drying out, uh, there is a full expectation that uh, it will be back in service uh, in the not-too-distant future. Right, absolutely. Uh, the, the, the concern would only be if, if there was water in this sublimator uh, when we returned it to vacuum. And so, so obviously, we're going we're gonna to dry that, that out uh, properly, and it, it's, it'll probably take on the order of a, a week or so. Uh, to get that properly dried out, but but there's there's no expectation that that suit will be no go indefinitely. It, uh, uh, we, we believe once we get that sublimator dried out, uh, it'll be ready to go for EVA. And um, just to be clear for our viewing audience and our listening audience, uh, the suits that they wore on Saturday functioned perfectly, Absolutely. bone dry, right? Yeah, yeah, they they worked uh, worked as expected. 
as we expect uh, the suits tomorrow to do as well. What was the philosophy uh, now in uh, putting Hopkins at the end of the robot arm for the second EVA and basically switching their designations EV1 and 2, which gets into a little bit of a confusing uh, procedural and paper trail? Right. Uh, so we had originally planned, since since Mike is is uh, is uh, or, or was before this this EVA uh, the other day, uh, first time uh, uh, EVA guy, uh, we planned to give him some experience uh, out on the robotic arm on EVA number three or, or EVA 26, as it would have been called, um, because it's it's apparent now that that we'll be able to uh, to get most of our uh, most all of our critical objectives done on our next EVA, which is going to be tomorrow. Um, there was some thought from from both the crew and uh, the ground here that it would be good to to get Mike some some experience flying in the arm, uh, and so uh, so we went ahead and swapped roles uh, between the crew members. So so Mike's going to be out on the arm on this EVA, and and uh, Rick's going to be out uh, free free floating. Um, we we are st still going to retain the designation. Rick is still going to be designated EV1, uh, and and Mike's going to be uh, designated EV2 meaning Rick is the, the lead spacewalker. But uh, for our kind of ground procedures down here, we, uh, we basically kind of have to scratch out uh, EV1 and 2 and, and reverse those as to, because fundamentally Mike's doing the role that uh, uh, would have, we, we had bookmarked for, for EV1. And for the media out there, don't be confused. I'll try to explain this tomorrow during the spacewalk. Uh, as I said, a little, little bit of a paper trail to, to try to follow along during the spacewalk. Why only two EVAs now? Is it because we got so far ahead of the timeline on Saturday and you, this is an EVA smorgasbord week with the Russians looming on the horizon at the end of the week. How is it all going to fit? Yeah, so uh, based on our experience from the, the previous time we did this pump R&R, &R, we, we had a lot of problems with the uh, quick disconnect connectors on the, uh, the, uh, the pump module itself. And so we book, book kept a, a lot of time uh, on this EVA uh, on Saturday to, uh, for the crew to be able to manipulate those uh, quick disconnect uh, QDs. Uh, that went very well, and so it, uh, it, it took no time at all for them to, 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 to be able to manipulate those quick disconnects, and so uh, as, as we prepared for, we were, we were ready for them to do other tasks, which basically were the first half of the tasks that we had originally planned for, for, for the second EVA. Uh, so we, we basically got uh, uh, EVA and a half worth of, of activities done on Saturday. Very good. And as all of this activity is ongoing, earlier today, uh, Station Commander Alec Kotov and Sergei Rosansky, the flight engineer, they were in their spacesuits, the Orlon suits, in the Piers docking compartment getting ready for their excursion on Friday coming up, right? Absolutely. Yeah, they, they have a, a, a spacewalk out of the uh, Russian segment on Friday that uh, they, were, uh, they were getting ready for uh, this morning. Christmas, what a week, <laughs> what a couple of weeks this has been. So to set the stage, er Koichi Wakata was involved in robotics conferences today. Uh, the two spacewalkers, Mastracchio and Hopkins, did a procedures review earlier today. The stage is set for the second of these spacewalks to complete the work uh, to replace this uh, pump module and get the station back to full cooling capability. Spacewalk scheduled to begin at 6.10 a.m. Central Time on Tuesday. We'll be on the air with our live coverage at 5.15 a.m. Central Time on Tuesday. Judd Freeling, thanks very much for joining us. Appreciate it. Thanks, Rob.